On this episode of the Dudes and Dads podcast, we are hanging out with our good friends Matt and Brian, talking about what it means to be a dad, a dude, a father, and all that good stuff in the crazy times in which we live. Coming at you. You're listening to the Dudes and Dads podcast, a show dedicated to helping men be better dudes and dads by building community through meaningful conversation and storytelling. And now, here are your hosts, Joel DeMott and Andy Lehman. Joel, welcome back to another episode of the Dudes and Dads podcast. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it is I, Joel, along my, I. my trusty friend, producer, and... Uh, all around good guy. All around good guy, Wandy Wayman. Again? <laughs> I can't say your name correctly anymore. It really, because it, it doesn't have the same ring. Chester. Chester. It's easier, it's easier to say that. Chester right? T. Layman. All right, let's let's just say it, Chester. Chester T. Layman. Hi, everybody. Good to have you back with us. Thanks for joining us here at the Dudes and Dads podcast. Uh, Andy. Um, well, here we are. We're uh, the, the day has finally come because we've got we're two, back at it. We're back at it. We've got uh, we're we're hitting a stride, and by a stride I mean we're recording regularly, Twi- twice in a two row, two times in a row, uh, <laughs> in the midst of vacations and all of that. But uh, tonight, Andy, we've got we've got our our inner circle here, as we're calling it, the inner circle of yes. of fellow dudes. I and I wanted to play the dudes of the square table sound, but you would not let me. You would not have it. No, because Andy doing an, a two minute long. Uh, epic intro to a segment which you're threatening to do now it just it, it i mean for a classical music lovers i'm sure it's great but every time you play it i feel the need to fall asleep is i i feel i just want to be honest with you about that so no offense to your lovely music selections but but we need we need to go in a different <laughs> as, we, as they say in the business we need to go in a different direction all right all right <laughs> i'll tell the producer <laughs> I'll pass your critique along to the the front office. Uh, so, Andy, um, tonight we have with us uh, our good friends uh, Brian, Chris. Uh, Brian is a uh, well, he's many things to many people. Actually, um, uh, he is a he is a dad. He is a he's a dude. He's a definitely a dude. Uh, he also likes to dabble in uh, underwater photography. So. That's actually not true, uh, but is a photographer uh, here of more of a normal. A nor- I don't know if there are normal photographers, but he is a he, he is, is one. He is a professional photographer here in the uh, the Elkhart County area, and then uh, and really does actually travel all over the place. Jets jet world, setting jet, world renowned yeah, world renowned jet setting to far far away places as well, and then uh, we also have a good friend uh, Matt Miller that is here also dude dad. And uh, uh, high school, well, middle school educator, the model for Brian's underwater photography. Also true. Um, uh, winner of the 2015 Midwest Slam Poetry Contest. Little known fact uh, <laughs> about, <laughs> but he is also a poet as well. As we we are sharing his poetry recently, Matt has hit a groove here recently. We should talk to him about this. Uh, Matt's, I don't know, I'm having, and maybe it's just the days that we're in, I'm having like these strong visceral reactions to Matt's uh, poetry these days. I don't, I'm like finding myself deep, deeper in them. So maybe we should talk about that too. Yes. But first. Hey man, what's brewing? What's brewing? All right. So what's brewing, Joel? Okay. Uh, so here's, the, here, I'm just going to catch, catch you up right to it because I feel like we're at a time where I had like a, I had a strong and this is very dudes and dads related, but I had strong cultural awareness the other day. Uh, as maybe I have mentioned, um, uh, well, following my recent baseball related, <laughs> related injury. That you, I, by the way, your eye looks better. Yeah, much better. Uh, different glasses. Uh, following the recent injury. So uh, my eldest son, Aaron, who's going to be 11 here in November, we have entered the dark world of travel baseball, which like he has to do the tryouts and things like this for next season. They do winter workouts, all this, right? Well... Um, I, uh, we, we, we did these tryouts or whatever. We, we sought out these teams that are in the area. So, cause we were not like, we did not want to travel all over God's green earth to play baseball games. There's a team here in, in the local area that we tried out for. And here's what I want to say. 
I received a packet, a, a lengthy packet of information about this travel team expressing their philosophy of baseball, which I should say I fully endorse their philosophy of baseball. They're, they, or they're like, you know, yes, we were playing baseball, but we are also developing like citizens, good human beings. Sure, absolutely. Right, yeah. the productive members of society. This is their, this is their, which is like, yes, great. Okay, we're not just out here to have a bunch of 11-year-olds win, you know, win tournaments or whatever. But like on the first page, um, they in detail describe what, what I kind of had a sense of, but the sense of like the world of youth baseball is basically been massively corrupted uh, as they would call it by what, what they refer to as daddy ball. Gotcha. A- and, and there was, there was like a, a whole paragraph dedicated to trying to counteract this phenomenon of basically the fact that there's a lot of fathers out there that uh, when coaching their children, apparently become abusive and or um, uh, unhelpful to the larger you know the large the larger right. group the larger right. the larger team and the, this is this is like a like an epidemic so to sure. speak within youth within youth baseball and I just had this moment where I'm like I'm like I get that and there are certain I mean in coaching little league I've seen other other fathers where I'm like I would never you know, I would never want right. that guy coaching my kid for a number of reasons both character and competency issues and but I just thought to myself, I I am seeking out. Here's what I'm doing. I am seeking out another guy, who uh, to to coach my kid, because there's a long list of people that I cannot trust to do this. And so now I have to like go on this this quest to find a a, a man, or, or you know, heck, it could be a woman, whatever. But to find a person that I can trust to. Uh, be responsible with you know with an 11 year old right to properly coach them yeah and it was just like it was one of these moments where i'm just like this is where this is where we're at this is this is the thing so i i don't say that like i know that sounds kind of heavy and and a little a little (laughs) a little less than happy to start (laughs) off our episode but but here's the deal and this is the thing that i want to just you know as we're all about dudes and dads and being better men better fathers all of that um there is an issue out there there is an issue that um, men, grown men, lose the ability to act like grown men in certain competitive environments, and particularly when their children are involved in that. And that that is a that is a struggle that we're in. And so this could be a whole episode of itself. It could be a whole episode of itself. In fact, I bet you the guys sitting with us tonight would even have maybe some thoughts on it uh, on themselves. Maybe, I'm guessing they have at some place uh, witnessed maybe a similar phenomenon. But anyway. That's what's brewing. That's what's that's what I've been thinking about uh, in gotcha. the fa- in the fact that we're we're done with baseball season and yet it feels like we're we're beginning, Started. We're beginning a new one. So, anyway, it, my thoughts. Awesome. There you are. Yeah, and I I don't really have anything this week for what's brewing. I mean, we're just trying to get through life, uh, starting school and stuff, and we'll chat about that a little bit more because I think that's a little bit one of our topics. It tonight. is one of our topics. But uh, so I would like to uh, welcome to the show both Brian. Chris and Matt Miller. Welcome, guys. Hi, guys. Hello. Thank you. Mm, thank, that sounded. <laughs> that sounded yeah. It sounded nice. <laughs> I felt queued up for a while. I felt. I felt <laughs> he was waiting the whole I felt time. Very thanked in that moment. <laughs> well, anyways, Matt and Brian are are some of our closest friends. Uh, Joel, we've done a lot of life together. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Going, going back to when we did the home church together, it was our our four families. Um, yes, I at count. The beginning. I the way I like to say it, I met uh, I met Brian. First in February of 2001, so that's over 19 years ago, and uh, Matt close to 16 years ago now, and uh, yes, we've done a lot of life together. It's been, it's been a journey. It has. But these men sitting with us uh, know us probably better than most, and that's why I'm terrified to be here tonight. No. <laughs> <laughs> this may be a good another good one to do a post episode. We like Last week, if you've not heard it. Last week, maybe I can get thrown under the bus yes, on this. Last one. week, Joel threw me under the bus just asking my dad a bunch of a bunch of random questions, and it was he fun. delivered. He Chuck Layman delivered. Uh, if you haven't seen that <laughs> and you're a Patreon, please go over to dudesanddadspodcast.com slash bonus. Um, anyways, welcome to the show, guys. Um, I'm glad to have you guys here. Uh, so, um, Joel, if you want to kick us off here, yeah. Um, so first of all, guys, just so we get real acquainted with uh, with the particulars, we like to talk about the dad stats. So, Brian. Tell us about your wife, how long you've been married, how many kids you have, and what their ages are, and go. 
My wife's name is Kimberly, mm-hmm. and we have been married for 21 years as of earlier this month. That's right. Uh. And uh, my children are Abigail, who is 13 years old, Asher, who is nine. Yes. <laughs> That's correct. Something. And Olin, who is seven. Yes. Uh, Brian, Brian is the brave soul amongst us who has the first teenage girl. Yes, I I, yeah. I have one teenage boy and soon to be two. Eli is turning thirteen this next week. Shut so. the front door. Yeah, actually, the day that this episode airs. So yeah, uh-huh. happy happy, birth- b- happy birthday, Eli. Birthday, Eli. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And yes, and so and then Matt, same for you. Your wife. How long you been married? And all those kiddos that you have running around. Yeah, dad's dads. Uh, yes. Courtney and I have been married seventeen years, and we've got. Four boys, uh, Gideon's 12, and Judah's 10, and Hosea is 7, and Abel is just her turn 6. Awesome. Well, so this is going to be a quick uh, question for you guys. What is one thing that you guys love about being a dad right now? Right now. Ooh. Right now. Ooh. Right now in this moment. <laughs> 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 that you're here and they're asleep. <laughs> they are somewhere, asleep. Yes, they are right. all asleep. Uh, um, uh, I think the thing that I'm most excited about being a dad right now is um, watching my boys enjoy the things that I enjoy. Like during the quarantine time, we've spent a lot of time together. Joel was talking about baseball and I coach tennis and I write poetry and <clears throat> love to read and things like that. And I'm watching each of my boys kind of separately get into those different things. And that's that's awesome to watch each of them grab one of my loves and, and take hold of it. Brian, what about you? My kids are, all three of them are starting their first year of public school, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. Yes, but, we will. Uh, yeah. But it's really, it's been exciting to to watch them. They are loving it. Abigail doesn't, she's 13, she doesn't love anything. So <laughs> she she's not loving it. But um, but she's doing, but she's doing well. The boys are loving it. And so it's really exciting to get to see them branch out and experience something that was very familiar to me and probably most of us growing up, except for you, Joel. Uh, (laughs) Only through third grade was I homeschooled. (laughs) But anyway, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing, uh, just to give context, I mean, uh, uh, your wife, Kim, who is a, who is a, a very gifted and, uh, well, at one time, uh, licensed educator. She's Um, still licensed. She's keeping that license up. Oh yeah. That's good. Brian's like, we gotta have a fallback. Gotta have a fallback plan. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. 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 Um, so, who is? But you've been homeschooling since. I mean, really up to this up to this point. And um, and and props to Kim as she listens to this because my goodness, I think educating it, there's enough distance, especially between num- you know between Abby and 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 uh, Asher. Like it would just seem to me as time went on, the challenge of like educating an older kid and then, I don't know, fluctuating between the two. I I personally, I would lose my mind. But uh, maybe Kim did, and that's why you're all in public school. Teaching now. your own kids yeah. at all, period, you, you'll lose your mind. Yeah. <laughs> why won't you listen to me? Yeah. So um, so we've all made, and we've all made, all of us here have had to walk through this process recently of deciding. How we are going to educate our kids? What what education for our kids is going to look like right now? Uh, so, right. Randy, you can tell yeah, us what so, what you guys processed and what you were about ready to do, and then right. end up doing. <laughs> right. So we have all along like uh, gone homeschool. We've done it, you know, since the very beginning, just like you guys have, um, Brian. And this year, we kind of got to the point where we're like, okay, you know, let, let's make a change. Let's send our kids to to public school. And I. Um, and so then this whole coronavirus thing hit and it was it was like, OK, so do we send our kids back to school? We were in the same boat as you guys, you know, had made the decision that we were going to do it. Um, but we chose the opposite. We decided to go ahead and do the homeschool thing again this year. Again, we're going to reevaluate that next year. But this year we did that because we were we, we didn't want to get to the point where kids had to come home and do e-learning. And then Julie has to do school as the teachers tell her she has to do it, whereas she knows what works. Yeah. With the homeschool. So we decided just to go ahead and do the homeschool again this year. The thing that you knew felt better than going into the thing well, you right. didn't Ab- know and then that may that might right. shift Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, because, you know, obviously, you know, those 
parents who had to do the e-learning thing last year were it was it was learning for you guys. You guys had to learn what you you know were doing all and, the things. And I should say just because of uh, um, shall I say your more rural location uh, where you where you what live. are you talking about? Yeah, we're in yeah, heart of the city. There, <laughs> which yeah. city is that? That's that's it. Uh, My Andy, city. <laughs> Andy Andy's uh, the the Layman Ranch is 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 out in the middle of it's surrounded by cornfields and the deal is though like within the school system that your kids would be would have been a part of so last year i had so i had <laughs> i have specific memories of when we were all when the kids were e-learning uh, at the at within this school system that would be here where his kids would be at you know kids were trying to turn in their assignments with uh you know they don't have comcast uh their internet connection cannot sustain larger file sizes so to speak and so i have i mean i've image <laughs> vivid memories of uh kids that were part of this congregation turning in assignments by driving up close to the church to get our wi-fi here and like <laughs> yeah. sitting in their car and waiting and waiting away and and i just thought like that was another piece too where you would be entering into all of that business of, right of trying to uh trying to, to do the technology thing yeah. and have the internet because that you know i'm working at home you know, three out of the five days a week, and I'm using the internet pretty exclusively. So for us to have to share that with the three kids just would not have worked. Yeah, I boy oh boy, that would have been a would have been terrible. Would have been a good time. So and then Brian, you and Kim, you had the conversation. Yes, we are pulling this trigger. We are sending these kids to public school. I mean, what was that? What was the process like in your kind of decision making and what you were taking into account? Well, as we went through the last school year, it was kind of. It was one of those things where it just seemed like it was time. I, with Abigail hitting eighth grade, you know, it, coming up on eighth grade, starting eighth grade this year, it it just seemed like it was time for her to have other people teaching her and to start getting to throw her into the social experiment of school. Yeah, you know, of public school. And uh, so we had, and then we'd asked the boys, "What do you think? Do you want it?" And they were like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, we get to spend a day with a bunch of other kids. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> what? Uh, they were all in with both feet. I mean, yeah. yeah they so when we um, when the end of last school year happened and everything got really weird uh, for people who have their kids in public school, but now we're homeschooling. <laughs> um, we started we started to question our decision of like, well, should we should we do like like mm. Julie and Andy are doing and keep them home for another year because who knows what they're going to go into, uh, or should we just stick to it? I mean, we're also in the process of moving. So oh yeah, by the way, and building a building a home, <laughs> right? Building a house <laughs> and uh, changing school districts. Nothing from like stress. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, right. <laughs> Only a little stress. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So changing the school districts that we, I mean, going to schools that we knew really nothing about. And, uh, so as we started looking into that more, we thought, yeah, we'll just, we'll just go for it and see what happens. And so that's what we're doing. And that's what you're doing. It's going well so far. Yeah. So no, no major red flags, no, uh, major regrets there. Nope. Then Matt, our, well, our so our situations are similar, are parallel in what we were because our kids are, well, half of your kids are in the same place. Yep, we are. And, uh, how did you guys navigate the decision? What were the what were the conversations? Well, I think it was a little bit of a simpler decision for us be than for you guys because I am a teacher, and so my mm. school system was going back, and so if I wanted to continue to be employed there, I <laughs> <laughs> you had this. I was you were going back. back. There is and that. And since I was going back, then it's like, well, I guess I have two kids who are at the same school as me, and I guess they'll come back too. And if they're going back, then <laughs> might as well just send everybody back to school because sure. cause there's nothing to, you know, we're already going to be exposed if there's a right, virus right. breakout, so... But th but that I know just in talking with you, like the idea of going back as a teacher, that was stressful for you too, right? For sure. Going back as a teacher creates a lot of different stresses. So, um, I mean, regular stresses aside, um, this year there's all sorts of extra details that we're worrying about beyond just uh, trying to educate the, the students. And, uh, 
you know, going back and forth, like my school right now is working on a hybrid schedule of some days at home and some days at school. And do students even know which day it is and <laughs> making sure that we get our assignments right. up by a certain time in the day. And uh, that's that's a crazy navigation all of uh, all on its own. Yeah, I, I will be honest. In the last several months, I have lost track of what day it is more frequently than ever before because there is like this to is tuesday any different than wednesday <laughs> or is it yeah so one bleeds into the other um yeah yeah brian what about you though how is this time brought stress like what's your biggest stress right now for you my biggest stress uh like as like dad stress or Dude stress. In, or, however you want to take let's that. Let's name oh. all of them. Yeah, let's, let's just go. Let's go there. Let's go. Uh, d- well, uh, dude stress would be generally work stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, also on a new health adventure, as I am more advanced than you fellows. <laughs> um, well, we, sh- we should say that you are self-employed, too. So it's not just that yes. you're a photographer here. You are a self-employed photographer here. Yeah. Yeah, it is Brian Chris photography. Yeah, that's the one. Um, because it'd be weird if it wasn't. It would, right? Wouldn't that be somebody's great? Somebody's doing if that. You, if you came up with an alias and na- named your <laughs> photography studio after someone else, that would be, It'd be kind Chester. Of, it'd Chester, be kind yeah. of fun. Chester yeah. photography. Chester <laughs> photography. I'm sure that it exists. Probably. Um, what was I talking about? So, stress. So stress, stress. work. Right. And so, you're, you're so eating. Work stuff and uh, it's just just kind of basic work stuff dealing with, you know, work stuff, and uh, and then like uh, going to the doctor and having them tell me my A one C was an eleven, because it goes to eleven. <laughs> this one, <laughs> this and, one goes to eleven. Yeah, and so um, choosing not to do medication of any kind there, but mm-hmm. treat it with diet and exercise diet and exercise kind of become like a big deal and it takes a lot of planning yeah. Yeah. stuff when I'm used to just like, I want the path of least resistance, which is usually the Taco Bell drive through Right. And so, There's you know, very little but, resistance but, there. Right. <laughs> very little. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So having to try and eat not responsibly, but perfect. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. for the next three to six months, my goal is to like no compromises. Eat. Yeah. Perfect. And so that requires a certain amount of planning or you just end up eating way too much Greek yogurt in one day. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know. So dad stress, though, uh, I would I would have to say that my 13 year old daughter, which probably like most 13 year olds, I'm sure that is Micah 14 yet or is he, he still 13? is and he's 14. Yeah, he's 14. Right. So I know that you guys have had some similar like. I'm sure that everyone with a teenager has had some similar, like all of a sudden my child knows everything. Right. And when I even try to impart any kind of wisdom, I get the look of like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Are you trying to tell me something mm-hmm. like, Oh, right. I forgot. You're a whole 13 years old. Yeah. Uh, so trying to convince my daughter that certain attitudes and behaviors are the kinds that when adults have those attitudes and behaviors, nobody wants to be around them ever. Yeah, um, it, It's hard to convince her of that right now. I'm sure she'll grow out of it. I hope she'll grow out of it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of a, that's been kind of the dad stress area. Yeah. This, this feeling of, um, and obviously, like I working with youth, I have a, a fair amount of conversations with parents that have like they're like something has changed. We have turned a corner here. Well, and it makes me want to know. I need. To, I should have asked my dad this last time he was on. Like, was I like that? Did I? I mean, I'm sure I was. <laughs> yes, you but were. I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know that that I was yeah. like that. But now looking back on it, I'm sure I was. And there is there is kind of a I don't know. You, you payback. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Well, you 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 grieve a loss a little bit there yeah. in in relation like in how you're connecting relationally and and you do you do dream for the day that it will return. And I think it's important to also to continue your relationship going on and like trying to still 
be close to your to your child that's like that. I know it's it's hard during these times, right, Brian? I mean, it, it, like, it can yeah. be, yes, very yeah. difficult. Yeah. Well, and you guys are both dealing with your first kid, like right, our first, oldest oldest child becoming a teenager, which is where I'm at next year. But uh, yeah, I mean that's got to be its own. We'll journey. invite you back on this time next year to <laughs> right. talk about it. Um, but yeah, yeah it, it isn't. I think it's important to continue pushing through that. But yeah, it's some days are tough. Yeah, those those early teen years. Well, and and what I try to remember, I try to go very scientific about it. Like if you realize like all the things that are going on within them that are like exploding in exploding and change and and uh, you you're just like it's amazing that they don't literally explode as people. Like this <laughs> right. completely come come undone. And yeah, I I think that um I mean, do you guys feel like in our current like societal issues with these my perception is, is that everybody is at kind of a low boil, uh, <laughs> right? Just yes. like at all at all times, coping range is reduced for <laughs> conflict and things like that. Um, do you feel like I I don't know? Are, is it harder? Is it harder to parent right now? I mean, is, is does it feel harder or different to parent in the kind of the atmosphere that we're in? Well, I think like Courtney and I are at a low boil a lot of the times because like the two of you together like, uh, I mean, against each other, not against each other. No, just I was hoping you'd say yes, because we get to dive into that. But anyway, <laughs> go, you know, keep going. No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I love my wife. Everything's fine. It's great. It's great. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, fine. it's great. <laughs> no, but there's but there's like uh, every decision that, that you make about your kids or your activities as a family, it seems to be fraught with, uh, you know, either judgment from outside sources or from your from yourself feeling like just doubt. Yep. Uh, so I feel the little boil. And then like when a kid has the audacity to question that choice <laughs> that we've made. <laughs> Not knowing mm-hmm. them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To think mm-hmm. that they know better at seven years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that you've been. I have a seven year old yeah. who likes to do that. Yeah. And and. Th- You've gone through such a journey to come to this. That that's the other thing. Like right now, right? You've gone through such an emotional journey to come to the decision that you have. You have a ton invested into that decision, and then it's so like right. You have these little these little monsters that like just are like just they don't care about any of the journey that you've gone on <laughs> to make that decision or come to that place. It seems like it's yeah. like yeah, it's like. Well, no. and they don't know what all is going on in your guys' yeah. head as, yeah. as parents, so they they can't know. But yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's just one of those. I, I don't know. Like right right now, I just think the oh gosh, yeah, the that low boil sort of experience. I mean, I I, I woke up. Well, so we're having um, we're having bedtime issues right now. Like this is something we are. We're, we're we'll be at dinner we'll be at the dinner table this is what i this is what i do this is what i do every we're at the dinner table we're having dinner and i will say okay kids tonight you will be our kids bedtime is 8 30 you will be in your beds in your beds at 8 30 this means this means you've gotten every glass of water that you will possibly ever need for the rest of the night <laughs> you have thoroughly brushed all of you have thoroughly brushed your teeth you have all given us the hugs and kisses that are necessary for you to go off to sleep. You have, uh, you have adjusted the uh, the airflow in your room accordingly. I mean, all things have been taken care of because at eight thirty, doggone it, you will be in bed and you will be quiet. Does everyone understand this? Yes. Does everyone understand there will be consequences if you do not do this? Yes. Okay, we've all heard the same thing, right? Yes, everyone. <laughs> It's 9.45, and I am coming unglued because I have done everything I possibly can to prepare them for the, and, and follow through on the expectation. And uh, what was it like the other night? Uh, we walk in, and the, uh, the aquarium is rearranged in the boys' room. And I'm like, you thought you'd do some late-night aquarium <laughs> adjusting? You'd like that just came to you uh, at 9 o'clock or they whatever? They were trying to do underwater photography. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they were dabbling in the underwater photography. Um, no, and so I just – but I and I realized, like – and, like, I am, I am screaming. I am absolutely screaming. I am – like, I have – because in my mind, it's like I did everything I could do to make the – to give the expectation to make this go well – 
and they have just completely disregarded what I have said. And I feel like I am losing control over this situation and I'm being held hostage in my own home. And on top of that right now, it's like I need, I just need some peace and quiet and God forbid I should have like 20 minutes to have an adult conversation with my wife before Jackie just, because Jackie has narcolepsy and she loses consciousness. I mean, very, very quickly. <laughs> like just, <laughs> but yeah, you know. I feel oh. you. I'm about the same way. Out, out. This is why we don't let her drive uh, any time after 3 p.m. Um, when I'm when I'm in the vehicle. I mean, she wants to take her whole life in her hands. It's it's her own thing. But uh, so, but I, I like I'm realizing like I'm having this like out of body experience. Like you know when I'm like what? Like clearly there are other fa- there are other factors that are that are playing into this. When I'm realizing that I'm like I'm reacting this way, but it's uh it's a reality I think for all of us. And then and then on top of that, this is true in our families. It's like then to go out into society and interact with other adults who also might make us feel are having their own issues. Yeah, are having their own issues. Um do you do you guys feel like and maybe you've experienced something recently like are we in short are we in short uh, in short supply of grace and mercy with each other right now? Like does that feel like that's harder than normal? Brian's like I, I I never give grace or mercy. It's yeah, right. So it's, so there's no change. <laughs> there's no problem. No change. No. Uh, I have not experienced a lot of that. I there like early on in the COVID thing mm-hmm. when they were first saying, "Oh, you should wear masks." I was like, "Yeah, whatever." Yeah. And I'd go to the store and like at certain places, like I felt like people were judging me. Sure. You know, and and I was like, at first I was kind of like, well. Screw you guys. I mean, who are you looking at? Uh, And then after a while, I was like, you know what? I I get it. People are freaked out because if they're reading the news at all, big big mistake. Sure. You're right. Because then you're really freaking out. And so I thought, okay, I could have grace for that. But my initial reaction was not that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, I think that, yeah, that there's probably a decent amount of grace shortage. Going around because it's everything is so charged right now. Yeah, you're on one side or you're on the wrong side that, yes. of everything, <laughs> yes. right? And yeah. uh, and that's just tiresome. Have you guys have you guys stopped watching the news, or maybe you never started to begin with? I never started. Like I I for the longest time I haven't watched news. Occasionally I'll read through it on my phone, but even then I try to just scroll through it and. You know, we started watching it like. We we were not news watchers until COVID hit last winter, and then we started watching. Um, I don't know, but then when August hit and school started and it had all of its own complications, it was like, no, I don't have time for any, right. anything right. else now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, and, and the other thing is is like uh, exposing our like. So have you guys? Have you guys had a concern or been watching out for, like, the influence of media news or whatever on your kids? Like, what, like, how have you, yeah, like, have you had to do anything about that? Have you adjusted anything with what your kids are taking in? I mean, I think for us, we have discussed it just like we have with anything else. If if they've seen anything, if they've heard anything, I mean, granted, especially during this COVID time, you know, our kids weren't out and about with other kids. Um, but you know, during non COVID times, they were out and about with a lot of other kids, but they still see things and they're still influenced by other people like their grandparents and aunts and uncles and, and other people that they're, yeah. that they are in contact with. And so right. we'll from now and then catch them saying something and we'll be like, wait, 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 hold on. Like you have to have a fa- family yeah, fact check yeah, moment. Like you can have right. your opinions and that's <laughs> fine, but know what you're saying when you yeah. say things like that. Yeah. We've done the same, much the yeah. same. Yeah, having to, uh, you know, well, and it's funny now because the kids are in the kids are in school, and and now everything is like every other word out of their mouth right now is 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 corona, <laughs> <laughs> coronavirus, uh, you know, and there's nothing. It's so funny. There's nothing more hilarious than hearing a four year old say, uh, <laughs> just yeah, just saying corona all the time. <laughs> the, the, the other day we were where were we at? We were somewhere out, and Hattie's mask fell. Oh, we were. We were at the beach on our, our Michigan trip and we were going up, Hattie and I were going up to the bathroom and I, so we put her mask on and it fell off and she's like, 
fine, I'm just going to get the Corona. <laughs> <laughs> fine. I'm just going to get the Corona. Fine. Just going to get it. Um, yeah, Matt, how about you guys talking with kids, news media, influence? All I that. mean, our kids haven't had a whole lot of news media influence. They get most of their like influence on that stuff from relatives and you know other kids at school but we haven't been at school so really we've just heard some filterings the last week as our as our couple of kids who are at school have come through stuff but it hasn't really like they have not had a lot of exposure now we've had family talks trying to like expose them to like here's why we're doing what we're doing or you know even with the social justice stuff that broke out this summer too yeah. like Here's why this is important to pay attention to. Right. Um, but they haven't really come across it on their own, which in a lot of ways feels like a blessing. Like, right. Yeah. Like I want them to be kids who, you know, are aware. Yeah. Um, but it feels good to be able to to explain things to them right now. Do you think our kids will look back, I don't know, five years from now on 2020 and it will like, what do you, th- and I, we're prognosticating here as we're in, you know, the late August, but like, what do you think they'll actually remember? And I, this does have something to do with their age probably too, but like, what do you think the, what do you think the takeaway is for them? Cause there, I, I know there's, there's a lot of parents right now, and this may be of older kids who are, are worried about kind of a long-term scar basically of, of what this experience has been. And I think of, I mean, I immediately think of our graduating seniors this past year that basically like every, every awesome thing that's supposed to happen in the spring didn't for them. And that's, that is a loss, but. And I think even for us, for our kids, they're going to remember like we had to make a lot of changes, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's been hard for me as far as like changing our plans and our our vacations and things like that and kind of going fluid, like, okay, well this is going to change because we can't do this. Let's push it back. Wait, we're changing again. Mm Mm-hmm. And I, I think for me that's been that for me that's been tough, and so I know that's for my kids because they were looking forward to to those same vacations. And so it, I think, I mean, to answer your question, I think that that will be one of the things that they're going to remember. And it, I think the other parts of it will probably depend on how much of this new normal stays normal, right? As opposed to what goes back to what it was previous. So that's yeah, what I think. I think my kids remember will remember that they didn't get to do all the stuff that they like to do in the summer. Yeah, just camps, and they didn't get to go play tennis with Matt at bright times, and mm-hmm. yep. they don't they didn't get to go to Spring Hill, and they didn't get to do all the stuff that they wanted to do. And my daughter just feels like this is very unfair. It's yeah. so unfair, and I'm yeah. like, you did. I mean, they're like the high school seniors, is like or people like who worked their whole life to like get to a point where they were really going to kill it on this like last year that they have to do high school sports or something. They were going to nail it. And then all of a sudden they get that taken away from them. You know, it's like you, what you're missing is like, this is not as big a deal as you, as you think it is. Yeah, The perspective and context. But I think that she'll still look back on it and feel like, Oh, the injustice. (laughs) I didn't get to do the things I wanted. I mean, she and I go to Cedar point every spring Yes, and we didn't get to do that. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's just one of the many things that she'll look back on and go, that year was the worst because yeah. I didn't get to do all these things that I was expecting to do. But I wonder, I wonder, though, like in once they become adults, like how much of this is going to matter? Like, I remember a lot of things in high school for me that I was like, this is either terrible or we're going to be best friends forever. And now I'm like, what? Like, who are you? And so. I wonder once our kids become adults, if this will just be another like, oh, that wasn't that great of a year, but it was okay. Or if it's going to be this, this was terrible. I think it'd be interesting to see how history treats this year. I mean, if if we look if we look back on it and go, oh boy, maybe we overreacted a little bit. Yeah. Then I think they might look back on it and go, oh yeah, yeah, you know that we didn't do a lot of things. But if they look back on it and history looks back on it and goes, oh, this was a terrible time in America. You know, then they might they might, they might look back that. on it with a little more intrepidation too. I don't, I think that that'll have an effect. I think it'll be interesting to see if yeah, if we are at a if we're actually at a crossroads or a turning point year, or if this is a <laughs> you know a blip that you know, and then right, um, it, yeah, time time will tell. But I uh, I I don't like my boys right now, and this is part of i mean their their ages i mean you know 11 
uh, 11, well, almost 11, 9, and 7, and Molly's 4. I think, it's just, like, for them, it feels like this is just going to be, like, a slightly unfortunate uh, series of events. Like, yeah. like, that's how they're experiencing it. And, I mean, for the most part, like, so we've got our three boys are in school. Two are in regular elementary one is online only for right now just because of uh respiratory issues and so and and his doctor was like yeah we just don't have the data on how he will react if he were to have any problems so we would just recommend and it's like i guess that's the scientific approach that will take you don't know you're the specialist so we'll just play it this way but um but yeah there it's just like I mean, for him, for Matthew, who's at home, it's like not great. It's not great. And I should just say, I, I don't mean to be, I don't, I don't mean to be critical. Don't mean to be a complainer. But I'm just gonna throw this out there. If we had to do e-learning last spring, and we knew the technology issues, what we were gonna have to do to make that happen, and we are six months later now, and I'm experiencing the same issues that we did back then. I just have to ask, um, is is the high school AV club running our technology <laughs> department in, in within the school system? And 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 I I just don't know. I, I can't I can't quite figure it out. But my my recent like the things that have recently pushed me over the edge is you need like to get Andy Lehman on that right now. Well, it's like uh, th- this has just happened enough, and and I should say to all our, all of our educators out there that are doing online format, you people are are saints. Uh, I you know Matthew's teacher right now, God bless her, super patient, having to work through the, the challenges that she's already had to work through. It's in- incredible, but it's like. Yeah, it's just it is such a like when you show up in the morning and like all of the things that are supposed to be on their virtual dashboard have just suddenly disappeared overnight and they're not there anymore. And you're like, uh, what am I, you know, what am I supposed to do? So I think that's the uh, that's the piece right now. I, we're, it's 2020, Andy. I mean, I know like how what's what? What happens? Do do magic fairies Re- just come it. in? Just turn it off just, and back on. You know, when when Brian was uh, worked for the school system, um, he just told people to to kick the side of their machine, and and it worked often. Uh, you would be surprised <laughs> how often it worked. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't. Yeah, I just that's been my that's been my big thing of like. Those were great phone calls, by the way. Yeah, I'm sure they were. <laughs> so it's not working. What I did. Open your hand, hold it out. Now get next to the computer and smack <laughs> it. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Yes. I'm dead serious. I'm so serious. Just anyway. hit that machine. See, but that's the problem. You can't smack anything that's, that's in exactly. the cloud. You know what? So, right. And that's smack the cloud. That's our issue, Andy. Is that we can't physically hit something to make it work anymore, and that is what I'm. That's actually what I'm really upset about. Is is that's the issue. Um, so. Matt, right now you are in an education setting, teaching of all people, middle schoolers. Yeah. Um, how do and, you do it? And and yes, sir, <laughs> sir, please tell. Sir, how me, do you do that? Tell, tell us the. In a, so you are you're on you're on premises some and off premises. It's a yeah, hybrid. So, yeah. So currently this week we were at home all week mm-hmm. uh, as a precaution. Um, because of stats in the community. But next week we're back to, well, and actually, I mean, this is the crazy part, right? Like, so the seventh and eighth graders, which I teach, were at home all week, but our fourth and fifth graders are at school, and our 11th and 12th graders are at school um, for part of the week. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so everybody's dealing with crazy schedules right now. Right. And, I mean that's probably the hardest the hardest part. But go on with your question. Yeah, yeah. So I I will. Um, what in the online learning format? What are you losing? I mean, what's what's being lost? Well, I think the definite thing that's lost is any 
like classroom interaction. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even as you like Zoom is actually kind of a wonderful platform in that it like lets you do things that an educator would do. So it lets you split people up into groups and it lets you like show documents and you can work on things together and you can show videos within it and all sorts of stuff. Um, but students tend to look at a computer screen for about five minutes and glaze over. I mean, I do too. So I'm not like right. not on students about this, but it's very easy to go check your email when the teacher is giving you instructions. Uh, and then when you're supposed to talk with a group, you don't know what you're supposed to talk about because you didn't hear what the what yeah, the teacher yeah. just said to you. Yeah. So I mean that's that is a huge is a huge obstacle is all the dis- distractions and things like that 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 can be at home and then and then also just like right now one of the problems is are we going to be ba- knowing whether we're going to be back in school or not right. so like are we going right. to in the in the spring it was almost easier because we knew for two months we were home yeah right, right now, now it's like the day to day or week to week you yeah. it's changing which is great because we want to get back in school as fast as we can but at the same time it makes it hard to know what's coming and so yeah. we've, I guess we've talked a lot about things that are, are negative and are stressing us out. What's one thing, guys, right now that's bringing you joy? Both dads or dudes. Uh, or maybe nothing. Maybe you don't have anything to answer, and that's fine, too. But Joy. <laughs> yeah, and so and I, let's, and here's the deal. Let's uh, give a little bit of a specification. So this is, we're, we're counting joy as being different than happiness. Um, so... Yeah, something that is maybe producing an a, a larger overwhelming sense of uh of well being, of of like we're gonna we're gonna make it, um, spiritually speaking, a a, a God is with me sort of sense. Um Yeah. Yeah, what are what are those what are those things? Because I, I'll be honest, I, I set this question up in our <laughs> I set this question up in our show notes and then I was like I don't know if immediately I know the like for for yourself for myself. Right. So it got me, it got the wheels turning for me um, about what is uh, yeah because you know what because happiness needs to be put on the shelf right now. And these right. days, like if I'm like, oh, what's my daily, what's my daily happiness quotient or whatever? Uh, man, that is that's a like a snake on beer. You know, that's just that's uh, that's all over the place. But you know, when it comes to uh, joy like working toward this kind of larger sense of like groundedness or whatever. What is that? What's that? What's that thing? Or what would, what would we like that thing to be? I guess. Where is that coming from? Hmm. My recent diet changes Mm -hmm. extreme as they have been, uh, have made a huge difference in my health. Yeah, and like how I I feel my emotional health too, and uh, while the last two days have not been so great, um, like all the days in the three weeks before that have been like really really good, yeah. and I'm just feeling really great and encouraged and like yeah yeah, and so that's been that's been really great. I said last two days though, it's like okay, why is it why is it not the same today? Yeah, it's been so good, and now I'm I'm still still eating the same you know i'm still nothing changed in like what's going in food or beverage wise so it's like why is it different today and i don't know why but um so, but that's been that's been an interesting that's had an interesting effect on my life because i deal i've dealt with so many emotional things depression type issues throughout my life that you know have not been like super serious but the, serious enough that they you were not running at full, the, right? Yeah. They 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 mess with me, and um and I never really ever considered like if somebody would have said to me a long time ago, oh you know it's probably because of what you're eating, I would have been like yeah thanks for your <laughs> thanks there Swami <laughs> thanks for that um, yeah I'm gonna have another donut, <laughs> uh, but uh, so it's been good but on like the joy side, um I've been working on music again mm, yeah and like over the last couple of days i have like recorded a song that really rocks and it like yes. i i listened yes. to it i was l- i was late getting here because i was at home listening to it so you know like, nice. you know yeah. and by the way i should just put this out there brian is 
uh, I was going to say the most self-critical person that, that I know. I don't, and I don't mean that in a overtly negative sort of way, <laughs> though it sounds just very a, harsh. Under the a little bit. Yes, yes, subvertly way. Yes, negative. It sounds really harsh when I say it. Uh, Brian, I mean, Brian would agree. He is his, he's his own worst critic on things. So even to hear... I'm just my own most accurate critic. Oh, there. see, that's I'm a realist. Yeah. I'm a realist. That's what he's saying. Um to hear Brian say that about about something that he's involved in, I, like I know that we're we're in we're in serious territory here. It, but I, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm expecting like Zeppelin to come out of the nice. speakers from what what he's playing. So music, so music, creative pro. I mean, creative process is is it is it the creating of something new? Like what is it? If you were to like really dissect the and get kind of cerebral about it, I think it, it's kind of the place that it's coming from. Because it feels like um, normally, like my whole life, I've wanted to do music and I like mm-hmm. creating music. But over the last, I don't know, decade, um, I have done very, very little of that. I've been in some bands, but I've, I've done very little of that. And I attribute a lot of it to stress Yeah, and the emotional like, oh, I'd really like to do some music, but uh, why? Yeah. You know, and then I don't do anything. And um and so over the last several weeks, I mean, I did, I did write and record a song, uh, during, during like the the quarantine shutdown stuff because I had nothing else to do. Right. So, right. I mean, there was there was a gap in my schedule. Yeah. And so I did do some of it then, but like right now, it just feels like it's coming from a place of, hey, I've got all this energy and I'm not feeling like I'm ten feet underwater. Yes. Like when I'm doing. Right, underwater, right. Underwater, 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 underwater. Yeah. and uh, so I'm thinking, what should I do? I've got all this energy. What should I do with it? I'm like, oh, I know. I should grab my guitar and plug it in, and yep. turn on some distortion, and yeah, make noise. And it, and it's been, it's been therapeutic. Yeah. Good. Matt, what about you? Uh, well, I'd say two things are bringing me joy. One has been um, my marriage. Um, Courtney. Oh, sh- oh, shut up. Great I know, right? answer. <laughs> I know. Great answer. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> just trying to be honest. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm just trying to, just trying, just trying to be honest. Just keeping it real. <laughs> uh, we have found ourselves on the same page a lot during like the coronavirus stuff and just being really grateful for that um, because we watch other people um, you know, that we know that are not on mm-hmm. the same page sure. or maybe don't even have the same goals. Um, yep. As they a may not even have the same book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. well, on the same page. Yes. So uh, that's been really, really a blessing. And then like Brian, the creative process stuff. So, um, you know, quarantine happened last April, which also happened to be national poetry month. And the more, you know, yeah. So I, t- I took on a poetry challenge of writing uh, a poem a day throughout April. And then, um, I don't know. I I feel like I'm a person who needs a lot of affirmation. Like that's something. And um, throughout Pause. This, that last one that you published, that killed, got published, killed, loved it, killed, loved it. <laughs> it was good. Thanks. Um, it was fantastic. It was okay. amazing. Thanks Continue. for the affirmation. Thank you. <laughs> Go on. I'm just glowing now. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, no, I, so then a couple of those have been picked up by journals and published, and that feels really life-giving as well, because it's great to go through the creative process, but it's really nice to have someone else say, that's good. So is thank this, you for saying that's yeah, good. Is this creative process for you, though? Is this coming out of this present time? Like, I'm I'm trying to find the silver linings in the dumpster fire that we have been navigating, and I'm... Like I'm trying to find the silver lining for myself. Like, what am I discovering about myself? What am I? What am I seeing? What are new insights that I have? You know, in these quarantine times, in these in limited social interaction times, all this sort of stuff. Like, do you feel like the poetry came more alive for you, or was it just the opportunity that that afforded? And it was like sort of was yeah. it hibernating in there and just kind of had the, like, what do you think happened? Yeah, I think it was a little bit of both. Actually, I mean, that's a cop out answer, but um, the the time was important right mm-hmm. like like everything slowed down um even even though i was teaching school there were gaps in the day and stuff like that so so there was there was more time but i also think that like the you know i've heard lots of people say that the the covid stuff like has revealed what was already there yep. and i think that like in the creative process 
like it revealed what was important to me. And so that's what I started writing about. Ooh. Right. And so like a lot of my poems have been about my kids and uh, yeah. about stuff like that. And so um, I think that that's a big part of why it's working. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, if this is, if this is God's just giant reset button, I mean, I, I don't mean to sound critical, but he, I feel like he could have done a few other things differently, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but there is this, like this reveal, yeah, revealing of, you know, of things. And, um, I have, I mean, I know for myself personally, cause this is what I do. Like I talk, you know, I talk for a living and I talk both one-on-one -on -one and in front of larger audiences and it's on like, this podcast you talk yeah, for the, millions of listeners um and uh and what i've what i've noticed is within my like within myself a a sense of um i just i want to be like like i think we are i think we're deeply so i think this whole thing has un sort of it has exposed our need for connection because we really it's we've really been taken away from i mean it's really been taken away from us where we've had no other no other choice you know during during the corn like the stay at home order stuff like i felt like i was living i told jack i'm like i feel like i'm living on a houseboat like like we we rode ashore for supplies and then we come back and we're like we're here and we're just trying to like find our own corner of the houseboat to try to like do our thing and, and not be on top of each other, but felt that isolation, but really like really started paying, uh, paying attention to, yeah, my words, how, you know, how I'm, how I'm communicating, how I'm communicating and, and things like that. And, and I, yeah, just the focuses have been different. The, the taking the time. And I just, I just wonder, it's like, how much stuff are we, I know this is like a big question, but it's like, how much stuff are we missing that is inside of us that apart from this season would would go on you know and that's good bad and otherwise you know but would go on unnoticed if we hadn't slowed down and i think it's interesting in following our conversation you know last episode about sab you know sabbath rest. and rest and 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 slowing down um i as uh the great rabbi abraham heschel once said find sabbath or it will find you and uh and when he meant when sabbath finds you if and he goes he goes on to say sabbath finds you in sickness and in and in, and in death basically like it, you pursue it and you can name your terms but if it has to come after you uh you don't get to be picky about how it you know how slowing down finds you and so yeah, I just I noticed that this is a season of opportunity and I and I hope people are thinking about it that way and I know it's hard to think about it that way especially I mean we're talking from a place we are all all of us are gainfully employed at this point that is not the reality for everybody. Um there are other stresses that are on mm -hmm. uh, on on folks and relationships. Um and it maybe it can be hard for some people to feel like this is an opportunity or that this is a season for things but um yeah, I just I'm I feel like we're all paying attention to things a little bit differently. We're we are noticing things a little bit differently and uh it's good uh though hard. But anything worth doing, I think you guys will agree with me. Anything worth doing is hard. Right. I think. Or you're doing it wrong. That that's another possibility. You could just be doing it wrong. <laughs> right. it's very, and it's very real. And it's unnecessarily hard, but cool cool. Well, hey, before we let them go though. Joe, yes. It, Yes, you know, you know, we do know what time now it is. Now it's time for dudes and dads pop quiz. Yes, yes, it's the pop quiz time. So I didn't know there would be a quiz. Yes, there, it's a it's, <laughs> it's a, a pop, pop quiz. quiz. You're not supposed to know, Brian. Dang it. Yeah, get, get your number two pencils out. Let's make sure they're sharpened, kids. Uh, so this is where we're. Well, you know, here's the deal, Andy. I think you can ask Brian, and I'll ask Matt. Do you want to just do it that way? Yeah, let's do that. Let's so you can fire. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll make you ask him four questions. I'll ask Matt four questions. If you got five questions in the tank, feel free. Uh, All right, no four. I'm I'm good at four. You're good at four. <laughs> okay, I, and not a question <laughs> the, more. The energy tonight. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm not, just I'm, I'm not feeling a five question <laughs> pop quiz. I'm feeling more of a four question. All right, Go. so Brian, first question. Uh, where did you take Kim on your first date? 
Well, I met her at Applebee's where mm-hmm. she was working. Yes. So and that's then, where you went to And on? then we went to Callahan's oh. at like one o'clock in the morning. We yes. drove around <laughs> South Bend and Elkhart and uh and then ended up taking her home at like six o'clock in the morning. That was our first date. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> All right, Joel. It's still weird. Uh Matt. Favorite Poet currently alive. Favorite poet currently alive. Tanya Runyon. Uh, she is a poet who takes scripture and meditates it into her everyday life, and she's got young kids, and I love the collision of that. Tanya. We should put a link. We should put a link in the show notes. Tanya. Tanya. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Brian Chris, who is your favorite musician right now alive? Favorite musician right now alive, Billy Corgan. Yes, he's barely alive, but he's, <laughs> oh, he's I'm, I'm, doing fine. I'm kidding. It's he's <laughs> fine. He's only about as old as Brian. He's he's, that's true. It's, he is older than me. He's not think. dead yet. <clears throat> yeah, Billy Corgan is he doing? Like, is he doing? I don't even know what he's doing. Is he doing solo touring stuff? Touring with Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, is he? Right he's yeah. with the Pumpkins. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Saw the show last year. It was amazing. Did you? He came out with a cane. Went to Chicago, saw it at United Center. Yeah. Oh gosh. But you, hey guys, remember when there were concerts? Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day. Ouch. Hey kids, we used to go to large venues where multiple people would sit very close to each other and listen to music. And I know. Sweat. We'd sweat. It's, we'd sweat and, and we'd scream at each other. It was great. True story here. I went to a concert during quarantine. Uh visited relatives out in Colorado and there was a concert at a park outside. Yes. 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 And the cops came and shut it down. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you rebel, you, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Matt, uh, my next question is going to be a uh, little known fact. It was, I didn't bring this up because I have I have feelings about it. Uh, <laughs> Matt's, Matt's family, uh, I can't even use the V word. They're vegans. And they, or they eat, I should say, you. you <laughs> we are Cheegans. Cheegans. Are cheating vegans. Cheating vegans. That's that's great. Uh, oh my gosh, I, we literally we've upset everybody now because the vegan crowd was like, "Oh yay!" and then they hear that, and now it's like moo, and we don't <laughs> they say moo? They say moo. <laughs> boo? They say. Boo. When they get mad, they're like moo. Boo. Uh, Matt, what is your what's your go to vegan dish right now? Oh, peanut curry. Peanut well, actually, curry. Actually, any type of curry, but peanut curry. The best, hundred yes. percent. And I, I will say, I'm with you on this because it's that's my fave as well. So peanut curry, it is okay. Andrew, all right, Brian. I had to change because I was thinking you're not drinking pop right now, so, or I can't right. even ask you about what your favorite pop is. So no, I'm not going to ask you that. I'm going to ask you, um, what is your favorite thing to do for recreation? <laughs> He's like, do you know me? What? What is recreation? <laughs> uh, okay, fine. I like to work. <laughs> I, I, wor- I work. Fine. If you're ha- no, okay. If we're hanging out as the four of us, mm-hmm. and we're like, let's go do X. What is that that we're doing? Ecstasy. No, no, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> let's fine. go do X. <laughs> I mean that would be weird. No, no, no. For us to if do that. If we were That's going to do something, t- what yes. would we do as the four of us? What would we do? Oh my goodness. Um that's a great question. I have no idea what we would do. I if I were thinking of like what would I want to do? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I'd probably be eat donuts and drink beer, but I, <laughs> but I can't do that yes. right now. Right. Um, okay. Or gotcha. probably ever again. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow, so, that went dark quickly. Have ever get, <laughs> it's dead to me now. I like when I give you a hug. I'm sorry, Brian. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Gotcha. Uh, Matt, let's see here. What's uh what's next on the uh on the question list? Um I want to get deep into Matt's soul. That's really where where I wanna I wanna rest. Uh, you're, go- you're going deep. I'm keeping it light with like you are, what do you want to eat? Are. Uh well, it has and peanut curry. I mean, I don't know how I don't know how deep peanut curry is. I mean, with, it's with got it. a lot of complex flavors. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's multi layered. Uh, what's uh, what's your go to uh, <laughs> what's your go to Netflix uh, watch right now? Oh, right now, I don't know. I I would say my go tos are probably the standards like the Parks and Rec and the Office gotcha. and Community. Which, and by such. the way, I'm two episodes from finishing the the Parks and Rec. Like, 
we watched we been binge watched the whole thing. We're two episodes. It is emotionally ta- that last season is emotionally taxing. Uh yes. Of Parks and Rec? Yes. 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 I loved their special though during quarantine. That was amazing. I loved the Parks and Rec. Yeah. yeah. So Okay. Gotcha. All right. So I'm gonna break out a oldie but goodie, but Oh <laughs> <laughs> deep in the archives of the Dudes yeah. and Dads pop quiz. I ask it a lot though. Uh-huh. So okay. uh favorite or first car. Nineteen seventy seven Mustang two. Which is a glorified Pinto. <laughs> so, the the late the late seventies Mustangs, for those that don't know, were s- terrible. Something went very wrong. Very very wrong. Was this was this during like the oil embargo stuff? Like was this? <laughs> there was an oil embargo in the four cylinder engine yes. of my Mustang <laughs> yes, yes. because it died right outside of my high school. Like right as I was leaving school, there's like two ways. Two there was one road, two directions. Yes. And I'm going up the bridge to take one direction out of school, and smoke just starts billowing out from under the hood, and the car stops moving, oh, and no. everybody from school is behind me, oh. and has to drive around me now oh. because I'm stranded in the middle of the road. Did you just like crawl under the seat? You're, and I walked away. Your life, <laughs> your I'm life dead is serious. Your life's I a teen out. movie. It's a teen movie, right? I there. got out and I walked away. <laughs> I can't I be seen. To the car. I can't be seen with this car. 1977. <laughs> It was a dark year for Mustangs. Well, it was a dark this, year for Brian. Too. Well, yeah, it was. Apparently. And this was like in 1988 or 89. Gotcha. So I mean it was it wasn't in the 70s. Sure. But the but the Mustang was. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So. Okay. I did not know that about you. That's so great. There you go. Uh Matt, my final question to you uh on the dudes and dad pop quiz is um uh I've already asked food questions. I've asked. I know about. I I have a. I here's the thing. I know about Matt's car history because I have inherited almost all of his previous. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> that is correct. <laughs> so I believe that you did get my first car. car. That's true. A beautiful, and I Wait. love that car. By the way, ninety a ninety two uh, Accord mm-hmm. uh, four door. That's Loved something it. Joel you and I have in common. We've both inherited vehicles from <laughs> Matt. Gosh, we have swapped <laughs> vehicles around like it's not even it's not even funny. Um, let's let's uh, let's see what's uh, so apart from any poetry that you have read recently. Uh, we'll just say let's just say uh, let's just say favorite favorite book in recent memory that you have that you have read or partially read. I'm not even going to make you qualify how much of the book you've read, but you're like, oh, this was this was good. Well, I read, um, like in the nonfiction kind of devotional category, I read Irresistible by Andy Stanley this summer. Yes. And really enjoyed that as a book that like puts words to things you were already thinking. So not new thoughts, but like, hey, right. look, somebody wrote down yes. the things that I thought. Um, and I really love books like that. In the uh, entertainment, I read a book that I don't remember the name of this summer, and it was about uh, walking the um, the Camino de Santiago. Yes. In, uh, but it was a fictional book set there. And is there a movie made after this fictional book? Uh, probably. It was kind of a famous like pop fiction book. So okay, it's about it was about like a man and woman falling in love type story as they both walked, but had enough depth to. Right to sustain you. To sustain me, yeah. wasn't a, wasn't a chick wasn't a chick book. No, it didn't have a it didn't have a, a scantily clad woman and a and a bare and a bare chested man <laughs> and a on cowboy the cowboy on the cover. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I, hey. I mean, I think there was a cowboy in the uh, oh well in, in the book yeah. somewhere. <clears throat> that makes it feel okay then, I guess. <laughs> Good. Well, guys, we thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. It's been so long since we've got together. We've just done a lot of Marco Polos between the, between That's us. Right. It's so, so nice to get together and hang out with you guys. So thanks for coming out. Uh, guys, you can find this and all of our episodes over at dudesanddadspodcast.com. If you want to help us out, dudesanddadspodcast.com slash support. You can become a Patreon. You can donate. You get extra bonus stuff. It's we don't take Bitcoin. We don't take Bitcoin, no. <laughs> Uh, also guys uh, in the show notes today uh, Matt and Brian they have interesting stuff they have not interesting stuff about their lives but they also have interesting stuff so you can find all that in the show notes over at dudesanddadspodcast.com uh, guys we appreciate you we love you thanks for showing up thanks for listening until next time grace, grace and peace, peace.